Hello everybody, this is Brick from My Attempt at History, and welcome to a little mini-series I'm going to be doing, and I'm going to call it Reenacting USGI Basics, or something you'll see in the title when you click on the video. But anyway, in this little, uh, probably five-part series, I don't know yet, we're going to go over a few uh, of the basics of reenacting a USGI from World War II in the European Theater of Operations. Today's episode is going to be on the basic uniform of the USGI. And this is the very basics of the uniform. Today we're not talking about headwear, we are not talking about footwear, we are talking about the things you wear on your body, not your feet, and not your head. Alrighty, let's dive right into it. I've got the five basic components of the uniform right here. Starting all the way on the right, you have a pair of socks. So yeah, I lied when I said footwear. We're going to start with the socks here. This is a pair of brown, I just got them at a army surplus store they're wool i think khaki looking socks they're pretty good stand in for one of the issue socks people don't really see what socks you're wearing anyway when you're at events so it's not a huge deal but this is a good thing to have in terms of accuracy because you'd be surprised how often you need to take your boots off you'll notice that there is no underwear here you are very 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 unlikely to be taking off your trousers or any of your clothes in such a way that the public will be seeing your underwear. Historically accurate underwear is available and it's cheap and it is a nice way to touch up your impression and get yourself in the spirit, but it is completely not necessary. So I've skipped it here. Just wear a comfortable pair of underwear when you're reenacting. Next, I have a white t-shirt. Personally, with my impression, I wear a white t-shirt and a lot of people have problems with white t-shirts and are crazy about it say the marine corps only used od t-shirts you need to wear a tank top blah 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 blah. there's so much in the air about whether it's perfectly historically accurate or not to wear a white t-shirt well in original pictures you see guys wearing white t-shirts to be historically accurate the issue what was issued to the men were tank tops later in the war and um od t-shirts but white t-shirts were so common and private purchase items that, again, this is just fruit of the loom. I got it at Target. These work pretty fine unless you're in an event that says you're not allowed to wear a white t-shirt. If you can find t-shirts like this that are in more of like an OD green color, like this blanket right here, or something similar, I would recommend you get those. But white t-shirts do just fine if you need a fill-in or if you need to bring extra shirts, etc. And what I said about extra shirts there is one of the reasons GIs wore white t-shirts is because they needed more shirts than one undershirts that is because they got sweaty and gross and disgusting and they wanted to change anyway moving on over your white t-shirt is one of your very your first specific world war ii item <clears throat> correct me if i'm wrong but i believe this is the m1937 wool shirt this one i personally got from what price glory they were having a sale on them what price glory and at the front are good vendors for these shirts they do decent wool they look like this, and we'll show what it looks like on a person a little later. Next after that is going to be the <clears throat> matching, I believe, M1937 wool pants, wool trousers. During World War II, they were the more uh, mustardy wool color, and post-war, they were a bit more darker, a bit more olive uh, OD, olive drab, a bit greener overall. I do have a pair of those. I may show them later for comparison. We'll see. This is a reproduction from At the Front. They make an excellent wool trouser reproduction. And I've used them in quite a few events. They are still holding up to this day. Admittance about the uniforms, they can be quite expensive. So if you are getting into this hobby, be ready for that. Finally, the last piece of the very basic uniform is going to be the M1941 field jacket. <clears throat> These are seen all over the place. They were worn in D-Day. They were worn basically to the end of the war by different divisions. And even in units that, um, even in units that were later war that you didn't see these as much, you would still see them in usage. So it is always safe to go with an M41. It is generally historically accurate for pretty much the entire European theater of operations, unless you're talking about like late 1945, well, then maybe you want to go for an M43, but we can talk about that later. So that is quite simply the basic uniform of the USGI during World War II. I'm going to put that on now, and you're going to see what it looks like on a real person. <clears throat> Alrighty, and now here we can see what it looks like worn. M43 field jacket, M1937 wool shirt, 
1937 wool trousers. Again, correct me if those designations are wrong. This is how it should be worn. Again, I've got the white t-shirt underneath. Oftentimes in original pictures, you see that GIs don't button the top button on their under, well, their 1937 wool shirt. And the M41 field jacket is generally buttoned up like this. Now, some of you may get the actual M41 field jacket. This is an at the front summer field jacket, which is made for the D-Day Ohio event that takes place, well, in Ohio, in Conneaut, Ohio, every year. And it is very hot and takes place in the summer, so for historically accuracy, these don't have liners in them, making them a lot cooler. One point to say, and I guess really the only point to say, is the M1937 wool shirt is to be tucked in to the trousers. Alrighty, that'll do it for today. This is Brick from My Attempt to History, and I'll see you in the next one.